If someone's wanting to play this army or doesn't know anything about this army, I think it's a really fun horde army. It's really fun if you don't want to think too hard about like ranged attacks. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some screaming in there that's based on bravery, but it's yeah. only on the flares and the terror guys, and it's really easy to pick yeah. up. They're very much like a rush down. We need to be instigating the fight kind of army, cool. but like the fight needs to be on our terms. Um, and so if that's the kind of play style you want, where you just want, I just want to like hold W or hold forward yep. and just go, this is a great army for that. Yep. This is Empty Wallets. And today we're going to be doing an army spotlight where we're going to talk about one of the armies in Age of Sigmar and all the things that it has in its arsenal, everything about the army so that you guys can know what it can do, what's good against it, uh, and just general information about it. So today I'm joined by Philip. And we're going to be talking about Flesh Eater Courts. So before we begin, um, this is not a competitive, you know, analysis of the army this is just the way i like to play the army uh, i think anybody who was playing the army should play them the way they want to uh, and enjoy it whether that's competitive or not all right philip me okay. philip i'm a man talking about flesh eater courts yes okay so tell me about flesh eater courts how uh, wh wh why did you why did you pick flesh eater courts I, what, 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 how do we get here? How do we get to you having? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, when I, when we first started, this is the first army I ever bought for okay. Age of Sigmar. Um, you guys had bought your armies already and you're like, you gotta come play with us. And I was like, okay. So I like went on YouTube and I was like, Age of, you know, Age of Sigmar armies. I, right. I knew, I knew nothing. I had never played 40k. I had never, this is the first war game I'd ever played. And right. like, and I just found like, it wasn't a tier list. It was just like, like a 15 minute video of like, here's every single army and a quick description of them. And they're like lore and flesh eater courts just kind of stuck out to me. It's like, oh, they're psychopaths. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and then I like, and I like the designs. They're psychopaths. <laughs> they're crazy. That's awesome. They're so crazy. We're, very briefly, why, why are they psychopaths? Uh, so they all are under a delusion that they are these noble knights and like kings okay. and like uh, are defending the kingdom and the realm. Like, and each court has a different delusion, but like essentially it's, they see themselves as like the perfect, like they're That's doing, wild. they're doing God's work. Oh goodness. <laughs> You know, they're doing the Lord's work or they're doing like their king's work or whatever. Yeah. In reality, they're just like these cannibalistic vampires, like just ravaging the lands, like yeah. eating, killing and eating everybody. That's crazy. That's yeah, wild. Super That's funny. That's actually insane. Yeah, it's crazy. That's how you got started with Flesh Eater Courts. Yeah. You pick them. You like the lore. Uh, tell me about just Flesh Eater Courts, how the mechanics wise, like what? Yeah. Give me give me their their battle, like their army okay. stuff and, you know. Yeah, so they start out, you start out by picking a, a court. You can either pick okay. a, a generic court of delusion or you can pick one of the grand courts. Your okay. generic courts are the smaller courts that, you know, kind of self-isolated and they have their own little, you know, they have their own special roles that you can handpick. It's from the old rules from second edition, or not second edition, uh, fantasy battles and things okay. like that. And now they've added grand courts, which mm. are like, these are like full-fledged, like massive kingdoms. Like they're not like okay. tribes, they're like, tons of different kings under an arch regent who's really powerful. And so the way these work is the under the grand courts, at least think of them as sub factions. They are right. sub factions. Okay. Each grand court has a different set of abilities that they specialize in. Some are better flying units. Some are better brawlers, some like monsters um, and some like magic. I forgot the last one is I never play it because okay. I, I don't like it. <laughs> right. I forget it. So, uh, but yeah, they, uh, they all kind of specialize in something, but at the same time, the, the model count and model, not model count. The unit type count is mm. pretty slim with flesh eater courts, so there's not a lot to pick so from. So you're meaning like the different yeah, the, types the, of war the different, scrolls. Yeah, like yeah. their war Dif scroll list is pretty slim. Yeah, so the, the the number of war scrolls that they have is pretty slim mm -hmm. compared to other armies, but I think it's it's still enough for yeah. you to be like, okay, you still get some variation in what you pick. Right. Um yeah. That's actually one thing that made me pick a different army too, was the army, and we'll talk about fire stars at some point, but fire stars just didn't have a whole lot. Yeah. Either so I was like, oh man, I, it's the guys I picked. <laughs> do you ever do you have that feeling with them too of like, man, it sucks that they don't have more, or do you feel like yeah, they no, I still I have definitely some good feel stuff? that um, they have good stuff, and I do enjoy playing them. They're still my favorite army to play, mm. but I do find myself playing some of my other armies more often because there's more variety in list mm. building. So yeah, it's like totally okay, my only option is like, how many of this unit do I want to take? Do I want a lot of them or just a little of them? Right. But I have to come, they have to come in They're every list. There. They're going to be in every yeah. list to what volume are they coming in the list? Right. Okay. Um, and so that to me doesn't feel super yeah. varied. Um, but that being said, when you do pick, you know, flares versus crypt horrors, which we don't have the table, uh, the play style is completely different. Okay. So like every Grand Court play style is very different and feels very, very unique. Okay. Um, even though 
the the models themselves don't play much okay. different. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's it's super fun. Yeah. So you have the different delusions, right? So yep. what makes them play so different from each other? So I'll we'll talk specifically the one that I play the most is blister skin. Okay. Uh, that's the one I like the most, and it, it emphasizes flying units okay. more so than any of the other ones. Gotcha. Um, so the way they play different is they add two inches to all all movement. Everybody gets two inches compared to what their normal war scroll is. Um, it makes flares, these three up in the front, and makes them battle line. Okay. So you can take more of them as opposed to having to take three gotcha. units of, at a 2,000 point. Okay. You know, so Otherwise, so these are your only battle line. Essentially, the different uh, delusions kind of focus Changes. on a different yes. unit type, and that's yep. what makes... Okay, that's cool. And they basically, it makes either the crypt flares, the crypt horrors, the ghouls are always battle line, but it'll, or it'll make terror geists over there. Okay. It can make them battle line too. Wow. So depending on what the monster heavy one, uh, Morgant, I think. Okay. Um, so basically every grand court just changes who your battle line is. Okay. And then there's a couple of like, there's four options. Yeah. You have. Yeah, yeah. What battle line options you have. And then the artifacts of power and stuff that you take kind of okay. feed cool. into that. That's awesome. Yeah. Super fun. So on top of I'm delusions and um, the things that come with those, do you have any other, army wide abilities that you yeah, just get. So totally. what are those? Yeah. So the two, the two most important abilities that the whole army gets, no matter what sub faction you take or grand court or minor court, um, everyone has a six up ward now. Praise be to the white okay. dwarf. So now everyone has a six up ward, which is super nice. cool. We just got that over the summer. Um, and then the other thing that is specific to our army is something, a uh, command ability called feeding frenzy. Right. So yes. yeah, you love this one. I love it. Yeah. This is Gabe's favorite. Yeah. Um, so feeding frenzy, uh, it's a command ability that you can use uh after you completed all of the melee attacks for a right. specific unit. Um, you can spend the command point. You don't have to spend until after they've already fought. So you don't need to declare beforehand, which just makes it different than some of the other ones. But yeah. basically you you after they finish fighting. You declare feeding frenzy, spend a command point, and they get to pile in and do all of their melee attacks that's, again. Yeah. That's um, just which can insane. make can change the flow of a of like a a battle, like our specific combat right. phase. Like totally. I mean, even it, the fact that you don't have to call it before. Yeah. I don't know when it's coming. Yeah, you don't know when it's coming. It's you don't know when I want to use benefit it. benefit to you. It's yeah. yeah the, the ball is always in my court with right. that decision, as long as I have the command points for it, which is another reason I play blister skin because mm -hmm. their artifact of power lets me roll for more command points. Yes. So it's like they're very they're very command point hungry, and their other army wide thing that everyone gets. Uh, every single one of the abhorrents which are like the arch region, like they're the kings of the delusion. They're like yeah. the actual like rulers of these courts. Um, they all have summoning abilities. Okay. Um, so they're, they're very much a horde army. Like in, in practice, yeah. they're, they're meant to be like overwhelming numbers as opposed to overwhelming strength. Um, they're okay. crazy and like on the, you know, but they're just dudes in loincloths with claws. <laughs> a bunch like of Smeagles. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're a yeah. bunch of Smeagles. Like, so it's like their thing is <laughs> Smeagles. They're more like Gollum. Like really yeah. Smeagol is nice. These guys are not, right. yeah. you know, but, and so like their whole, their whole, the ability, all of the abhorrence once per battle at the end of the movement phase, you can spend a command point to either. It's got like summon men at arms, summon holy knights. So it's once per battle and you, have to, and you have to spend a command point. Mm, sometimes we'll, we'll get there yeah okay. when we talk about terrain features i can there's a caveat to that okay cool uh, but in practice in theory like every time you're doing a summon you need to spend a command point to Dang. do that summon but it's a once per battle thing and depending on which abhorrent you're taking uh they can summon different things so the okay. abhorrent arch region is the best one he has the best options he can summon either 10 serfs right. little guys three knights which are either the flares or the horrors right um or can summon a courtier uh, which are the hero units. So it can summon a whole new hero unit, which can, um, which is crazy awesome. Cool. Um, and then some of the other abhorrents are either have just 10 serfs or just three knights or just courtier. Like, so when you summon that other hero unit, do they also get a summon? No. Okay. So no, because you can't summon abhorrents. Abhorrents are the only ones that can do the, the summoning. Summons. Okay. So, so this isn't like an all, every hero in this army gets summoning. It's, the abhorrent Ugh. heroes get summoning. Okay, there's just a lot of summoning. There's a lot of summoning. So the abhorrents get summoning, meaning they're bringing new units to the table. Okay. The the small courtier heroes. Yeah. Um, well, the white dwarf changed that too, but the small courtier heroes, they all have. So here we have flares, just as an example. Yeah. This, even though it's painted the exact same, this is the Crypt Infernal Courtier. It has an extra set of wings. Okay. So in the beginning of my uh, hero phase, or during my hero phase, they have they have an ability that can use. It's not command ability. It's just a command trait, not a command yeah. trait, but just a, a war scroll ability they have. Uh, if they're within twelve inches of a unit that is missing a model, 
So like, yeah. let's say this guy died. Right. He's off so, the table. I roll six dice and on a five up, I can bring back. Okay. One so of, it's not, it's not a summon a new unit. It's bring it's back. Bring back old, yeah, it's bring back. Yeah. old one. So, so that unit died. You can replenish units. It's like, right. it, again, it feeds so, into the horde. It's not bringing them back to life more so than a new one is like just. It's like a better in. rally. Yeah. It's a better rally. Yeah. And so each of the courtiers can do that for their specific subtype. So the court, the Crypt Infernal gotcha. can only do it for the flares. Okay. There's a Crypt Gas courtier that I don't have can do it for these guys. And then, the, you know, there's that's a, cool. So each of them have it. But now since okay. the White Dwarf, they've actually created a heroic action. So now every hero can do it. Um, wow. As your heroic action, you roll six dice on a two up. As long as you're within range, this thing is 12 yeah. inches. You can bring back for every two up. You can bring back one of these. Two and every, up. Two up. These things are one wound. They're, these things are cannon fire. It's still fodder. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So you're bringing at a minimum, like a little Because a rally is a six. Rally is a six. Yeah. Yeah. On this one, it's a it's a heroic action and it's a, so no wow. command point cost. And it can happen in both my, my hero, because it's heroic it's action, hero both phases. hero phases. Wow. I don't have to wait for my own. So like it, it helps the. Like, can they do it in combat? Like if the unit's yeah, in it combat? It does, does not matter where they are. It's, if the unit is within range and you can do that heroic action, you can. That's awesome. They have to be attached to the same unit if they can't fit. So if you surround them and I can't fit another model in, then I can't put them in. Right. But that's the only way that I would not be be allowed to put a model back right. into a unit. Okay. That's so that's same. another thing. I guess there's a lot of things that are very specific to flesh eater courts that make them. Yeah, just make them unique. Unique. Yeah. Like so, you've got um, your delusions. Yep. And then the six up ward. Yep. Which are listed in like bat like army. Yeah, traits. that's just yeah, just battle. Traits. And then so I'm I'm assuming that this summoning thing isn't listed in the army traits it's in the different war scrolls uh yes those okay. are all war scroll abilities right. so the art yeah but the heroic action is all next to each other it's like oh every hero gets yeah some yeah. sort of summoning or replenishing a or, replenishing of some kind okay. yeah either summoning new unit or replenishing an exhausted unit once this full unit dies though this guy cannot can no longer right Re bring you know, replenish them because that unit's fully fully deceased right um but that's pretty cool. I, yeah, it's that's really a, fun. A, something that somebody could easily not see because it's just in the War Scrolls. Yeah, of, so yeah, you can you can miss that them. unless you read and memorize all of them. Yeah. It, again, because a benefit of not having as many like spe like differentiated right. War Scrolls, you kind of can learn the army really fast. I picked this army up really really quickly yeah. as my first army because like there's nuance to it, but it was a low low floor, right. Leo, like low skill floor, high skill ceiling kind of army. Right. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. Cool. So those are the army traits. Yeah. Um, now let's move on to the different uh, command traits. Or, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. Com the command <laughs> yeah. traits, right? Yeah, command traits. Yeah, there's command traits, artifacts, artifacts power, spells, all that spells. stuff. Okay. Yeah, so I guess first thing is, is this a wizard army or a priest army? Uh, wizards. It's a wizard. It's, yeah, okay. there, are, so I don't, there, are no, there are no priests in the cool. army. Um, there are... Depending on how you build them, lots of wizards. Okay. Um, every abhorrent ghoul king uh, or abhorrent arch regent, anything that has abhorrent in the name is a wizard and can cast at least one spell. Okay. I typically bring at least two abhorrent ghoul kings and an arch regent in almost every wow. list. So I have at a minimum four spells per hero phase. Jeez. Um, and four yes. dispels. Yeah, and four dis yeah four unbind or dispel attempts. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh so it can be it can feel really spell heavy. I forget that they're really spell heavy yeah. until I start playing and I'm like, OK, got to remember to do all my spells. Oh, got to remember to do all my summons. Like so yeah. there are like, again, if they seem simple, but there's just there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So very spell heavy when we're talking spells, their spells aren't their specific spell lore isn't super strong. There are a couple in there that I'm like almost must takes compared to some of the other. Like one of them is called Bone Storm. Mm. Like if they're within 12 inches, it's like a casting value of like three or five or something yeah. you did they'd take one mortal wound you're like why would i that's arcane right. bolt is better than that yeah <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's like there's no point. so it's like it, it is an old it is an old book uh it came out yeah. in 2019 so it's pre right we actually edition. skipped past yeah that. we did we did this isn't a new book this no is, this is, this is not a new book aos2 book this is an aos2 book you they mentioned have, you had a, a white dwarf yeah we had a white dwarf which um, changed us yeah a little bit yeah so that came with that came no. up with the six up ward and that came up with the heroic action heroic and then some path to glory stuff too. Stuff. That, okay, cool. We and, we'll, and we'll talk about um, battle tactics and grand strategies. Yeah, there's a couple um, on there too. Later, but okay. So we did. So, so it's yeah. an old book. Old book. So, so some, some, some of the spells that just you're don't just make like, sense. oh, it doesn't make sense anymore. Like you'd, you'd rather just spend arcane bolt. And so right. for that specific one, but then there's other ones like spectral host. Mm. Uh, that is my must take. My arch regent gets spectral host every single time. Um, mostly because I play blister skin. Yeah, so flying units benefit more from it than other things. So what it does is I can pick a unit 
And if it's a non-flying unit and the spell goes off properly, I think it's cast value seven. Um, they become a flying unit. Oh wow! So like their movement then is just so then they get the ability. They get the of ability of blister skin. Yeah. Or like yeah, the thing, they're just the, flying. They're just flying. Right. Okay. Uh, they just become a flying unit. Whether right. blister skin makes your flying units battle line. So now you just have a lot of flying. Yeah. You, so, okay. but where I where I you usually end up moving, like I wouldn't spend it on the ghouls because their movement is six. Mm. Like flying, the benefit of six inches of flying, like little pebble I can get over now instead of yeah. having to go around. Like in, uh, where where that the spell really shines is on flying units. The spell specifically says if the unit can already fly, it can now run and charge. Wow! So it takes this really already hyper mobile army and turns them into like you are crossing the entire board in like yeah an instant run and charge run and That's charge crazy. yeah crazy. And if you roll a ten or higher, you can pick three units to be affected by the spell wow. instead of just one. Wow! So, so they would still if they ran, they'd still lose their shooting. They still lose their but shooting, they but they charging, could get to charge. So which, if if you're trying to do an alpha strike, like you, I just want to get across the board and get in the combat yeah. and lock them up really fast. Or just snag an objective. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. just that it, it can, it can really, that's you, cool. You can move around a lot, that's which is really fun. fun. So I just, I think that's why I play blister skin the most is just because if I don't play blister skin and it's, it's a very horrible, you know, it's like skin yeah. like, or like gloom spite where you're just slowly marching across the table with that's cool. the thousands they're of just, tools. They're just fast. Yeah. Yeah. I like fast, fast yeah. and mobile. It helps me react to, you know, okay, I need to get over there and get to that objective. Yeah. Like, I don't have to, like, okay, it's not going to take me two turns to get there. I can cool. get there in one. Yeah. Spells that are uh, specific to certain heroes. So, the War Scroll spell for the Arch Regent. Um, I like him a lot. The reason I take him in everything is because he gets two spells. Uh, but mostly because of his War Scroll spell. Mm. Pick a unit. Casting value of seven. If it goes off that, you roll D3. Um, and you add that number of attacks to their all their melee attack characteristics. Yeah. So it's like up to three extra attacks. And I typically try to slam that on one of the terror geists. Nice. Which we haven't talked about yet and like yeah. how fun they can be. Yeah. Um, but it's just a good buff. To it's just a great buff to a number of attacks. And then targeting, you know. and then you, you know, stack that with feeding frenzy. You're getting right. uh, just like it's just, it, you'd be able to do it for both. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could do it because it's till cool. the end of till my next hero just phase. Big burst of damage. Yeah, huge yeah. burst of damage. So I, I like his deranged transformation. Not no, what's that one called? I forget what it's called. Okay. Not during cool. transformation. It's on his war scroll. It's on his war scroll. You just read it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, so are there any um, spells that you're like, this just don't even. A bone storm. Don't touch bone storm. Don't touch bone storm. Hey, just use arcane bolt. Just use arcane bolt. Right. It does more damage. It, it like it just, it either does one damage at 12 inches or it does D three or three right. at like less than three. So just, yeah. just use arcane bolt. I think it has the same or lower casting value than yes, Bone that's Storm. Fine. That's fine. Um, but that's the only one. There are a couple other in there that can be useful. Like Blood Feast is okay. Um, I cast it on an enemy unit and assuming that there's a friendly unit within six inches of them, they take D3 mortal wounds and for every wound okay. that they receive, that unit, my friendly unit within six inches either heals or okay. can, if it's very these guys, situational. Very situational. So it's like sometimes if I'm really, usually I don't take it with blister skin because everyone's kind of spread out and flying around. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm playing like a like a more ghoul heavy army, I, yeah. I take that one because that that one will, there, I can. Right? Well, yeah. it also I can bring models back to those units that okay. spell. So it's right. it's more geared for these guys. I don't run a ton of them. Some of my list actually, most of my lists now don't have any of it. Okay, just because I'm playing really, with, which we'll we'll talk about. We'll talk about that. Yeah, as we go in. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, spells wise, they have a lot of good spells. A lot of the war scroll spells are good. The regular ghoul kings. Have like a, a lesser version of this yeah. one because the arch regents like in lore is higher up than the ghoul kings. Okay. So so would you say that this army is a very wizard heavy army? I would. I mean, four spells and I mean again. Yeah. You, you're taking an, at least one ghoul king in every. You should be taking a right. ghoul king in every list. Okay. So you're having at least one spell. Um, I run ghoul king heavy, but so it might just be in the middle. You're in the somewhere. middle ground. It can be spell heavy if you want it to be. Okay. It can be non-existent if you don't want it to well you'll have at least one spell because literally yeah. every list you should have a ghoul king because there's there's only so many heroes you can take in this right. army right definitely um cool. yeah okay so let's talk about command traits um okay. so your general gets command trait that they get to lead yeah. your army totally what's, what's the one that you're like you gotta you gotta go with these so um that's a it's a loaded question because okay. flesh your courts is interesting um all of the grand courts, your artifact of power, command trait, and um, what's the other enhancement that you get? I think it's just artifact of power. Yeah, and your command and then trait. yeah, that's right. And then they get they get one of so you get an added benefit of 
basically, when you have a grand court, let me start over. When you pick a grand court, your artifact of power and command trait are decided for you. Right. They're was, locked with that. That was grand a very court. big AOS 2 thing. No, that, that was, well, yeah, it was big in it. Yeah. Because Fire Slayers had that too. Yeah. Where you had to pick this, and Corn still does. Yeah. Don't have to you are, you're locked into those. But the benefit of taking a grand court is you get an additional ability. Like with Blister Skin, I get the mm, two right. inches of extra movement. Right. If you take one of the minor courts, you don't get that. So each yeah. of the each of the four grand grand courts you're locked into. You don't really have a choice. Like you're kind of okay. just okay. What like mine? Which might change. Which might change depending it on what you're doing. Probably will. Yeah. Looking at I hope how it does. some of the other stuff. Is yeah, going I hope out. it does. Um, but it might not because yeah. we'll see. Yeah. If you pick the minor courts or you just pick with a, ge- a generic court of delusion, um, first off, you're picking. You have to pick your delusion. Okay. So before you even get to command traits, you're picking a delusion. So there's like six delusions that you can pick from. Okay. Whether it be like you can add one to charge rolls. You can do feeding frenzy without expending a command point. You can do oh. like there's. Yeah. I forget them all because I don't use those ones as often. I used to run the free feeding frenzy one all the time. Yeah. Because that's the best one. If you're running a minor courts, just take that one. Especially it's, if you've it's, got. It's great. Especially if you've got some of the uh, terror guys. Yeah. Especially especially if you have the terror guys. Um, and then once you've picked your delusion, then you go to. Um, artifacts of power or command traits, whichever order yeah. you want to go in. Um, it's the same for both. Dependent on who your general is determines what list of artifacts you can pull from. So the okay. Flesh Eater Courts have a um, have a six artifacts of power and six command traits for their nobles. Okay. Meaning the the abhorrence. Right. And then they have a or maybe the nobles are the lesser one. Whatever the word is. Like yeah. they have six for all their abhorrence and then they have a different six uh, artifacts of power and six command traits for their lesser heroes like the, the courtiers so right. all of them are very specific to what like what are you trying to do with those okay. specific ones so um the one i normally run um oh it's it's a child it's something chalice again i okay. don't i haven't run the minor courts in a while yeah uh but it like lets you like heal d3 like once per battle or something right. like that which i you know no restrictions on it just in the hero phase right heal yourself which is good to keep the i usually use it on my terror guys because my usually my terror guys, Abhorn Ghoul King on terror guys tends to be my general. Yeah, um, he's a big guy. So keep he's, yeah, big guy does a lot of damage. Lasts a while. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully depends yeah. on who I'm playing. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. but but all that to say, like, there's a lot of variety. So, okay. like, for someone trying to get into the army and just like where we lose our variety in number of like types of models we can take so and you units. On the back end of like yeah. building it with building abilities. the specifics and the nuance of the army. There's like so much to pick from. You're just okay, like, okay, cool. you almost get overwhelmed with it. Uh, so you've got uh, big monsters that have guys riding them. Yes. You, does your army have any mount traits? That we do. Yeah, okay. we have mount traits every. So our most armies typically are restricted to one mount trait per list. Right. I like this enhancement. Flesh Eater Courts currently, right. my, it might change with third ed. Currently, because our second ed do not have that restriction. They, That's for awesome. every mounted creature you take, they get a mount trait. Okay. Um, cool. So they're mounted, mounted terror guys or mounted zombie dragons are expensive. Yeah, they're not cheap. You're at most you maybe have two. Mm. Um, what because, point, what kind of points you're looking at for that? Uh, the terror guys is four forty five. Oh, oh, they just dropped, so it might be four twenty. No, it's, no, the unmounted ones just dropped. Mounted okay. ones didn't drop. Yeah, four forty five for a terror guys and like four thirty for a zombie dragon. Wow. So it's like it's, it's pretty, not a, it's, it's pretty a, expensive. It's a significant chunk yeah. of your army. So it's like, yeah, we can all take as many mount traits as we want, but you're not taking. Yeah. Eight mounted. I mean, it's almost units. half your army for just two of them. Just two of yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. So typically I run two, depending on the list. Um, yeah. So I get two mount traits, which is nice. And the mount traits uh, for each of the specific. So there's, again, going back to the nuance of depending on whether you're taking a zombie dragon or a terror geist, mm-hmm. the terror geist has a set of six mount traits that it has, and the zombie dragon has a different set of six mount traits that it has. Yep. So again, we're getting into the like, okay, I can only pick from two monsters, but. They each have their own kind of yeah. strengths and things like okay. that. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, and I don't know, maybe I'll bring it up now. But the, the only downside yeah. to the army, now, I don't say only. There's probably other ones there, but the one that I noticed the most is the army is squishy. Mm. Um, for as even much, with a six up ward, with, with a six up ward, we're better now. Yeah, we're not as squishy. We have a little bit more sustain with a new heroic action. We have a little bit more sustain. Um, but if you're not careful in your placement of a unit, mm. if they get isolated, that unit. To, like we don't do enough damage to kill what we're fighting. Typically we get locked outside of the terror guys and the zombie yeah. dragons, like even flares, a small a unit of three flares. Like they're only dealing, they have no rend and one damage each on all their attack. Wow. You know, four attacks each, yeah. no rend, 
whatever. I think it's fours over threes, no rend, one damage each. So it's like maybe half those go through and you're, so you may be doing like mm. four to five damage, which is not going to kill whatever you're right. It's not going to kill the unit that's across from you. Maybe not even going to kill them in two combat phases. So even with feeding frenzy with them, you're kind of like, uh, so they, they operate a lot better in conjunction with other units. So you kind of want to keep it or in just larger units mm. themselves. So they become again, back to the hoardiness of them. Yeah. They're squishy and they don't hit really hard as a as a whole but there's lots of them and they keep coming and they keep coming back if you don't if you don't hyper focus a unit and kill it completely they're just gonna yeah. more of them are gonna come back if you're not careful right or, yeah. or if you don't double turn them right so, that's something i've run into or yeah like, if i just don't if i don't push into killing them then they just yeah, keep coming you're back forcing the forced. opponent to they can't spread out and spread yeah. out their attacks they have to hyper focus one place which is beneficial for them for killing the unit, but it's beneficial for me because now I have all these other units at full health, yep. not being targeted. They get to com- fight in combat. Right. If I keep them in the positioning right, they're all fighting nice. the same unit. So we're That's overwhelming cool. them with numbers and number of attacks versus quality of attacks. Right. <laughs> right. They just keep coming. Yeah, they just keep coming. They, I mean, they don't stop hard, coming. But they just keep coming. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that was White Dwarf. That was White Dwarf. Um, Definitely want to look at the White Dwarf if you're looking into fleshier courts. Yeah, it's if you have if you have the app because they're still a second ed book, all their rules are still in the app, nice. and the White Dwarf is updated in the app cool. as well. Because Perfect. so if you just just use the the Age of Sigmar app to build your army and go through the rules, everything in there is updated. Cool. Oh, one more thing from the White Dwarf: the Carnal Throne. The okay, so, so yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> actually, that's where I was going to go next. Cool, is, cool, cool. It's faction terrain. So yes. what? Tell me about your faction terrain, yep. and um, and we can talk about endless spells. Okay, cool. After that too. So, faction terrain. We do have a faction terrain feature. It's called the Carnal Throne. Okay. Or some people, it's spelled C H. Okay. A R, like, it's spelled like Carnal with a C H. So I pronounce it Carnal. I'm like, this has got to be a hard C. Yeah. But I've heard people call it's it the, the Charnel Throne. And I'm like, yeah. that sounds so dumb. The Charnel Throne. The Charnel Throne. Yeah. It just, it just sounds dumb. So I'm like, yeah. no, it's Carnal. It like Colonel Throne. Yeah, Colonel Throne. Like Colonel yep. Sanders. Yeah, yep. shut up. You got the courtiers <laughs> and the colonels. And the colonels, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay, continue. Are we done? Can I go home? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, was oh, wrong? it's all spinny now. <laughs> oh, okay. It's sorry. okay. All right. Um Carnal Throne. Charnel Throne. Okay. Cor- Colonel Throne. <laughs> Colonel Throne. Uh it is it is quite literally a, a throne of skulls, like almost like corn, like yeah. Skulls for the skull throne. It's it's yeah. like a legitimate just throne made of skulls of That's bodies cool. that they've eaten and wow. then turned into Great. a throne for their king, which they view as this royal golden jewel encrusted throne. That's and so it's just, funny. It's just the skulls and femurs of like people they've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Again, it's just the lore is so fun. Yeah. Um, They're sitting in on horses playing polo and shooting. Yeah, bows yeah, yeah. At, exactly. Yeah. At, when uh, realistically, they're these giant game. monstrosities yeah. like just stomping around. Right. Yeah. They're playing with heads. Yeah. <laughs> killing innocent people <laughs> yeah exactly to eat them when they think they're saving them from some horror or something right, it's yeah. it's so weird that's like cool. some of the stories we won't get into the lore yeah. the lore goes on and on yeah, that's cool um yeah so the carnal throne it is the throne of the king um for that specific court uh you can bring it for free just like every other terrain feature yeah. um it has to be deployed wholly in your territory which is typical for most terrain features outside of maybe like sylvaneth i know can jump like put stuff kind of anywhere on yep. the board Skaven can, but everybody else, like we specifically have to put it in our territory. Um, the benefits that you get from the Carnal Throne are two things. One, um, with the White Dwarf, it just updated. It used to have like a enemies within one inch got minus one to bravery. And it's yeah. like, how often are they coming all the way into my territory and ending within one, one inch, inch of, of this stupid throne? Thr- yeah. Like, just like it would just never happen. Yeah. Like, so what they did is they actually changed it. It has a 12 inch aura now. Okay. Any enemy unit within 12 inches of it cannot use any ability to ignore battle shock wow so if they have a okay. war scroll ability the only one i'm curious about and the community seems to still be divided on is ocr bone reapers mm. their whole army doesn't take battle shock oh. but they still have bravery so that one's like up in the air kind of up to your to or whoever like okay. whatever the two players agree yeah. to um okay but for everybody else, if you have any kind of ability or even the the command, you know, spending the command point for what is it, indomitable. Yeah. yeah. Where you don't take battle shot. You Which can inspired, you, or inspired yeah. yeah. Whatever it is. You cannot use that if that unit is within Dang. 12 minutes. They have to take battle shot. And that's in the White Dwarf. Shot. That's in the White Dwarf. Okay. So that was in the White Dwarf. And the other thing it changed, um, the White Dwarf just changed the whole War Scroll. Yeah. It's just a completely different totally. War Scroll now. Um, so it used to have an ability um, where you could do your summoning for free if you were within one inch of it. Okay. So they've changed that now. 
Um, it has to be garrisoned by one unit, typically a ghoul. You garrison it yep. with a ghoul king or an arch regent because it just thematic. It just makes yep. sense because they get the benefit from it. So it's like um, that the garrison unit. Obviously, he can do his summon for free without spending command point. And I think mm -hmm. it's any uh, friendly abhorrent within twelve, not twelve inches, three inches. Yep. Can also do their summoning free if it's garrisoned by another unit, by yep. another abhorrent. So basically, what that does is, um, it makes them less like it's situational. Like I almost always start someone garrisoning the throne because it's just like I'll I'll use I'll typically use one, at least one of my summons in turn one, mm. just to kind of like whether I'm going first or going second in that battle round. Like I'm gonna use it because yep. it's like just get it done. If the if the get unit dies. If the unit dies that has a summon that hasn't used it yet, I then lose that summon. Right. So it's like there's a chess playing of when do I use my summons. Some people just front load it and dump them all in turn one. And some people try to stagger them. Straight away, yeah. Tell me about your endless spells. Okay. Our faction specific, we have three faction specific endless spells. There's the Chalice of Ushurin, uh, Cadaver's Barricade, and like the Corpsman Stampede. Yeah. Um, Corpsman Stampede is a predatory spell. So if it flies over someone, like every other predatory, you know, most other predatory spells, it does damage to the units that it flies yep. over. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the Cadaver's Barricade is just a little fence of like corpses and like, it's yep. like, it's like a, yeah, they built a fence out of dead bodies, basically. Yeah. Uh, all that does is it, it obviously, it's just a terrain feature now. So like it, it can block lanes of movement. Okay. And if a unit, if a model starts a move within three inches of it, that movement is halved. Okay. So you can really like, if it depending on placement and things like that, you can really mess up someone's charges or their yeah. runs or whatever. Uh, and then the last one, the chalice, um, he was really strong when this army was super hoardy. It's not mm. as, like in, in 2.0, it, yeah. it was like broken. Yeah. Um, every model that dies within 12 inches of it, um, you set to the side and at the end of the game or at the end of that battle round, you roll the dice and on two up, those models just go back into the Yeah, unit. that's crazy. So it just created this sustain that yeah. again, that the flush courts are known for it. It's le it used to be, I think it used to have a wider range. Yep. Uh, before uh, in 2.0, but in, in 3.0, they like kind of toned yeah. it down a little bit. But those are the three. They're pretty, very straightforward. Um, and they're really good fillers because, again, going back to the unit count wise, is sometimes you find yourself like I'm sitting at 19, you know, yep. if you're referring to that point, you're sitting at like 1950. You're like, well, I, I can throw the chalice in there. I can throw the, yep. the, the barricade in there. Like, and, Again, depending on how you build your army, you could be really spell heavy. And sometimes you're like, I got four spells and I don't know what this, you know, yep. I don't know what to spend on summoning in the spell. So they can be useful and be used uh, depending on how you're running your yeah. army. Cool. Awesome. So um, I think to kind of cap all this off. Yep. Um, if I was thinking about playing Flesh Eater Courts, what's kind of the big thing that you would tell me, hey, this is what you want to do to have fun playing flesh eater courts. If someone's wanting to play this army or doesn't know anything about this army, I think it's a really fun horde army. It's really fun. If you don't want to think too hard about like ranged attacks, mm -hmm. there's some, there's some screaming in there that's based on bravery, but it's yeah. only on the flares and the terror guys. And it's really easy to pick yeah. up. They're very much like a rush down. We need to be instigating the fight kind of army, cool. but like the fight needs to be on our terms. Um, and so if that's the kind of play style you want, where you just want, I just want to like hold W or hold forward yeah. and just go. This is a great army for that. Yeah. Super fun in that cool. way. Cool. Okay. And so if I am about to play somebody who's yeah. playing Flesh Eater Courts, okay. what should I know so that I can beat them? The, the counter. So either focus down a unit until it's fully dead or target the heroes. Okay. If you target the heroes in this army, the army falls apart. The battle line aren't very good. Great. Like the, the troops aren't very good. All of the power in this army comes from the hero's ability to summon and regenerate and issue command abilities like feeding frenzy and things like that. Cool. So if you have shooting, maybe come shooting heavy and kind of pick, try and pick off the heroes, yep. the minor heroes. So those units can't get regenerated. The major heroes, depending on where they're at and which, what they are, because the terror guys like 14 wounds is kind of hard to chew through in one turn. Yep. But maybe that's what you do. You hard focus it like, Hey, we're, he saw, he set up the terror guys over there. We're all going over here and going to try and kill that dumb thing. Yeah. Um, so that much like night hunt where they're very hero dependent on the, the, un the army functioning well, I think Flesh Your Courts falls very similarly to that being another death army. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could talk forever. So <laughs> yeah. I literally could go on and on and yeah. on and on. There's, there does seem to be a lot of, a lot of really cool things about um, Flesh Your Courts 
just the abilities to summon, the abilities to replenish, uh, six up ward, uh, the different things so nice. that they can do with their um, uh, their sub factions and illusions. Yeah, um, it just seems like a really cool. Not a lot of models, but I think a it's a very cool beginner friendly army that has the potential to to become very like you can make it as complex as you want yeah. it to be. But it's very beginner friendly. Like for me, learning this army was very easy because it was like, oh, I just have to remember the five units yeah. that you know. It's like there's only five units and that's it. And I just got to know what artifacts I'm bringing. Cool. And so yeah, I think, I think they're a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to leave comments, but if you really want to deep dive into Flesh Eater Courts, uh, join the Discord. We're in there all the time. Uh, Philip would love to talk to you about more Flesh Eater Courts, and I'm sure, like he said, he could talk about it for hours and hours. Uh, so please join the Discord if you have more questions. We'll also have some links down in the description uh, with some lists that we put together to give some examples of what Philip was talking about on how to build Flesh Eater Courts to the way that he likes to play them. Um, this isn't necessarily a competitive build, but it is a fun way to play them and what he likes, he enjoys about them. So um, definitely join Discord, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for watching.